I don't know what the what's the capacity for planes, Doc. Sabrina flying out? Yeah, she's going out to uh or she's got some family stuff to take yeah, care of. Yeah, she says hi, Doc. Okay, say you, hi. You, you still want to go on her, though? Hey. You still want to go on if she's not here? Yeah, yeah. Tell her to wear, wear her mask. Yeah. Maybe she will. Okay. She'll be all right. Uh, 734, he's the chairman of the Physicians Advisory Group, Dr. Uh, Hoa Wen. Um, Doc, I know there was, was there a meeting last night, first of all? Uh, yes, we, we have a meeting um, last night. Yeah, we, we skipped last week, but last night we, we met. Um, let's just start with the, uh, the impact of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. So uh, I wasn't clear because I know the CDC had come out with something yesterday. Is there going to be a pause still? And what was the discussion? Uh, I, right now, they still have a pause, but uh, I think it's some um, sooner or later. I think they will uh, reinstate that. This is pause temporarily to take take a look at those uh, six Ks that um, they have to thrombosis. But um, I think sooner or later, uh, once they clarify things, it will be back in the market again. A lot of people still, you know, request J and J. Again, the six out of seven million shots, so it's just very, very low risk. Um, so they're going to take a look at those cases and then they will make decision. But um, more than likely, uh, J and J will be back in the market. Um, so what did you guys talk about last night with the J and J and the the path to half? What did the doctors on the PAG have to say about how this will affect our marching down this path to half? You know, right now we um, look like we will, we will achieve the path to half here in uh, probably the first week um, 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 or so of May or maybe the second week. But we are doing very good. You know, our turnout for vaccination is still very high. Um, so we will reach the 50% mark of um, of the fully vaccinated um, um, 16 years old and older in Guam um, by May. Um, the the challenge is to get to um, the eighty percent where the herd immunity will count. Uh, that's a challenge, you know. But at a certain point, um, things are gonna plateau out, and and we really need to do a lot of education, a lot of outreach to get the rest of the um, population to be vaccinated. You know, that's the only way that we can go back to some type of normalcy. Hopefully, by July. Uh, August or so. Uh, so there's, uh, there's some, uh, we have to think of some type of strategy to, to get people, to rest people to get on board to get vaccinated. So again, you know, 50% is easy to achieve. Um, 80% is uh, quite a bit the challenge. Like I said, we, we had to, to, um, to kind of reach out to people, uh, just like go out to the industry, go out to the place where they work to offer the vaccine, um, rather than just having one place. So there's a lot of things we need to do uh, somewhat different in order to get that 80% mark. Right. So what are some of the ideas that you guys have to reach those uh, people? If we if we hit the 50 and we plateau, I mean, that's a whole lot of people out there that we got to reach out to. You know, we, we reach out to the students, you know, um, because remember 16 to 17, you know, uh, are eligible now to get vaccinated with the Pfizer. Um, you know, uh, public health, when you go to school um, to get vaccinated, um, I think the private school will come up next. Um, and, you know, and to go out to the industry um, to uh, get vaccinated, um, go out to the company. So those are the, the stuff that we really have to do some extra uh, work in order to get to um, so up to 80%. People during the daytime, sometimes they have to work. So it's kind of hard for... Um, for people to kind of um, get off their the work schedule and go vaccinated, so um, we had to make it more convenient and more accessible for them to to get vaccinated, so we can reach that goal. Uh, again, there's some a uh, few people out there that are still kind of reluctant to get vaccinated, so we had to kind of make some education part to ensure them that the vaccine is safe and also very effective on, on what they 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 use to um, what they out there for. Um, so um, uh, again, this is a lot of stuff. Um, we had to discuss that with public health, you know, to um, to try to to get the shot out there past the fifty percent mark. Fifty percent easy. We will reach that. 
Easy. 15%, um, that's easy money. So yes. you're saying, so basically uh, you're saying, Doc, we need to do the vaccinations. We need to do them at night. We need to do them on the weekends. We need to go out to industry-specific uh, areas like what we're doing with GHRA. Yes. And that's, that's the key to get the vaccine out there. Um, so, uh, again, you know, when um, UOG is great, you know, they do a wonderful job to guard to this point. But again, you know, we have to go beyond that to reach out to 80%. Uh, and, you know, I tell you, when we have, um, I think, four in the hospital right now, none of those four are vaccinated. And, um, you know, it's a, you put yourself at a lot of risk when other people around you have been vaccinated. So the key here is uh, don't wait too long. And that's the thing. Um, so um, get yourself vaccinated and, and protect yourself, your family, and and uh, your co-worker at work. Um, and the message again, the second one that we have to, to put out to people and remind them is that you know, we've been over a year now about pandemic and people should know that if they feel sick, uh, they need to Go get tested you know and they all should know by now that it doesn't cost anything if you feel sick and go get tested because if you you know attend party or attend function and uh all type of um of stuff the, the family gathering um you put your family your co-worker and everybody at risk if you feel sick and you still attend those things you know so um uh, that's the few positive in the community at this point is you know, it's really about gathering and function. So we need to kind of refresh people um, memory again that if you feel sick, you know stay home, you know don't go to the party, don't go to the function because those people that attend those party and function are part of your family, are part of your friend, part of your colleague. So respect them and stay home and go get tested. Well, there you, you can go. miss a party. Yeah. No problem. Yeah, there's plenty of parties coming up, guys, down the road. You miss one. Yeah. There's always going to be more. It's in our blood. Uh, Doc, yeah. so four hospitalizations, none of the four in the hospital have got the vaccine. When when you get patients, maybe who do uh, sick visits or whatever visits to the clinic, and you talk to them about, hey, have you got the vaccine? They say no. What are the reasons that you're hearing? You know, so one of the reasons they still uh, have access to the vac to, to the vaccine, um, they still have to uh, um, to work and they need to find time to get the vaccine. Um, that's probably the, the major reason why people um, do not get the vaccine at this point. You know, um, so, but a very few that still thinking of a vaccine because of um, the side effect. Uh, and I tell you, um, talk to your physician. You know, um, 90% of the people that have any type of, of um, uh, talk about not getting the vaccine, when we talk to them, they, they end up getting the vaccine because there's a lot of uh, misconception out there that you need to be clarified uh, by a physician or by a provider in order for the patient to feel comfortable. So if I encourage that if you have concern of vaccine talk to your provider and and you know, they try to answer your question for you and and if you do uh, don't want the vaccine then that's your right you know but, um, um, talk to provider to try to um, to um, get an answer on, on those questions you have about the vaccine what about the latest uh, set of guidance that came out from public health uh, relative to increasing capacity limits to 75 percent for restaurants? Uh, I believe retail outlets, churches, um, but only 50% for the bars and the taverns. I think that's very reasonable, Chris. I think people, um, we had a lot of people now vaccinated, um, you know, from the cost was too low. So I think business have to go back to their normalcy somehow. And I think 75% is still very safe, uh, um, uh, um, no, number that we can put out. Uh, again, um, we still monitor any, you know, the positive rate and any type of cluster uh, that we have in the community. Um, uh, hopefully, we won't see any. You know, the only um, um, we about um, 
what a week uh, or so more out of the, the Easter weekend. So, um, so far the car scores too low. So, um, so far so good. So I think 75% still good. The bar, I think 50% right now is um, very acceptable. But um, again, um, we continue to monitor that um, and continue to monitor the hospitalization, right? Four um, in the hospital. And um, you just think about it, and we have a very low positive rate in the community, but you have four in the hospital. So you still have to really watch the hospitalization to make sure it doesn't go up any higher. You know, um, for those people in the hospital, uh, they are sick. You know, so um, uh, it doesn't matter if you have a you know, hundred positive in the community, but we have zero hospitalization. Uh, that's count a lot, but you have just a two or three positive in the community, and you have four in the hospital. Um, that's something we have to be concerned about. Doc, we talked about the Johnson Johnson uh, vaccine pause and uh, its impact, if any, on the the march to the path. Uh, to half. What about quarantine? That's the other part of that equation, right? Is if we get on the, if we complete this path to half, we're supposed to see a change in quarantine protocols on May 1st. What's it looking like? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, that's, that's the part where we, uh, we had to recommend, um, to the government that there is some, um, when we get to, to 50% mark, um, you know, we, the most likely have to follow the CDC guideline of people not fully vaccinated that come in without quarantine. Um, you know, um, the question is um, to do a rapid test at the airport um, as the last step for them to go home without no quarantine. If you're fully vaccinated, that means that you get your one shot of J&J or you get the two shot of Moderna and Pfizer and that two weeks after that, that's you consider fully vaccinated. Uh, then you can probably do a test and go straight home without no quarantine. That's something that that when we get to fifty percent, that's a doable thing. Um, I think that we can follow that. Um, you know, um, people who are unvaccinated. You know, they still take a lot of risks um, for the our island for them to come in. Uh, again, right now it's about forty six or forty seven percent of the people that uh, turn positive is in the Q factor, so it's almost half. Um, so the question of you, unvac if you are not vaccinated, um, uh, you still have a pretty high risk of bringing the virus into the community. So yeah, um, I, I would say that, um, those people that are unvaccinated, they still need to be quarantined uh, for five, six days and get tested before you can be in a home quarantine. Um, you know, we, we, we had to do that, but, um, uh, you know, again, um, even we change the quarantine guideline, we still have to monitor um, the positive rate in the community and also the hospitalization because if the hospitalization started to go up again, then, you know, um, you might have to rethink of, of what you do at that time. Um, is that safe for the community or not? Right. Again, it's a lot of fact out there, you know, um, uh, people are sick. You, you have to get tests and, and, and don't mingle with other people. Uh, this is where respect for your your friend, your family, your colleague play a big part of it. So uh, keep reminding people to do that. Right. Doc, um, I wanted to ask, uh, because you said May 1st, you know, in a perfect world, if everything goes the way it's supposed to go, that um, fully vaccinated uh, travelers uh, coming into Guam will be able to avail of the CDC guidance, which says that fully vaccinated travelers don't have to quarantine. But you have also said on the show that there are issues with compiling a reliable database of who's actually been fully vaccinated. So I don't know if I messed up, Doc, and I know you said don't laminate our vaccination card, but I laminated my vaccination card. Uh, so we, is this still legit or what? Because I, I want to travel this year. I want to go see my brother and sister. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Chris, we prefer to have some type of digital platform that um, that we can check online um, your status of vaccination rather than just that white card because, it's like, again, it's easily reproducible um, and it can be um, uh, fake somehow. So um, we're conditioned that we have to have some type of online um, verification, 
for our return resident. Okay, for the off island resident, they have some some. We have to put a requirement somehow that they have a a letter from their clinic or, or the healthcare provider that they complete the vaccine somehow. You know, there's no national database um, that um, for verification. But I, I think just like anything else, we have a letter from uh, the healthcare provider um, along with their card that they're fully vaccinated. Uh, those two documents should be sufficient for them to come to the island and prove to us that they fully vaccinated. Again, uh, fully vaccination means that that um, number one is they they have to, to meet the, the the Pfizer, Moderna, and the J and J. But anything that is not FDA approved um, is not considered uh, fully vaccinated. So they use a vaccine other than uh, Moderna, Pfizer, or J and J, then um, we would not consider that. Uh, Doc, I think we had talked about this, but will another inoculation be needed for the Moderna vaccine after one year? Um, yeah, you know, I mean, um, right now, as you, as you see anything else on the on the news there, that uh, most likely uh, it'll be an annual um, vaccine, just like mm. the flu shot. Okay. Um, I don't think we can go around that. Uh, most like I know nothing firm out there, but it looks like everything will point out to an annual vaccine for the um, for the COVID nineteen. Well, so, Doc, I mean, in a year when all of these vaccines start to, um, I, I guess, ex is expire the right word? Um, well, you know, there's new variants out there, mm -hmm. and I think the the booster is mostly for the new variants. Ah, uh, I see. Okay. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, so in a year when our vaccines need to be boosted, it, do you anticipate it being the same kind of outreach that we're seeing now where we have the UOG field, Cabo field house. Um, we have, you know, all these different vaccine outreaches. Is it going to be the same kind of thing? You think? Uh, I think that as we have the database on everyone already, uh, it'd be easier for people to get their, the vaccine in the clinic, just like anyone else or, uh, at the public health uh, thing. But that's something that, you know, Chris is some, um, it's uh, a few months out, and um, you know, public health have to um, kind of make a plan on how to approach that. But it's going to be, you know, um, um, uh, somewhat an annual thing. You know, um, uh, this morning I was heard that something that um, to help some state would try to um, do a mandatory uh, vaccine for the frontliner, and that's something that they still talk about, and um, so. Um, you know, um, to me, um, if you're a frontliner, uh, you're exposed a whole lot and you got to protect yourself and the patient that you, that you will serve. Yeah. Uh, that's something that, um, they, they are trying to debate for. Um, doc, uh, what about non-residents, uh, coming in? Would they have to be quarantined if they are fully vaccinated? Uh, yeah, if a non-resident come in, um, unless they um, they vaccinate with an FDA approved um, um, vaccine, yeah, they still have to be quarantined. You know, I mean, um, uh, we not talk about um, tourists. We're not talking about anything. We just treat everyone the same at this point, uh, Chris, uh, for, for our island to be safe. Yeah. So um, the guideline, any guideline coming out will be overall for everybody at this point. I don't think we are expecting the tourists to come in probably sometime at the end of the year or late summer. So at this point, the only way the tourists can come if we can prove that our car scores remain low and our island has been protected by some vaccination um, on our people to make sure that we somewhat reach the herd immunity. Doc, you, you said that um, it would have to be an FDA-approved vaccine for non-residents to uh, skip quarantine after we achieve the path to half. So in our source markets of Korea and Japan, um, and we'll just throw Taiwan in there, what vaccines are they getting and are the vaccines they, they're getting, are they FDA approved? Um, I, I'm, I'm not sure what they're getting, uh, Chris, but uh, like I said, I mean, by the time the we're really open for tourists and they ready to be travel, hopefully we get to our 80% um, vaccination um, 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 no, um, 
go already. Uh, once you get to 80%, uh, the rest, the rate of transmission in the community almost zero, you know, so when we get there, uh, really, if you can come in, um, if you, when you have the virus, you know, um, the chance that our people who get sick and end up in the hospital um, um, with the virus is, is somewhat very, very low. So that's going to be a totally different scenario, totally different from bone game at that point. That really, I mean, you can come in, uh, get a PCR testing before you come in to see negative, but we don't really have to worry about vaccination anymore. We have 80% of our, of our island vaccinated. And that's the main goal, and our people in our island should understand that. I mean, we, we really need to get to that goal in order for us to fully open our island for for anything, for anyone to come in, because at that time already, you are protected. The island is safe. So um, that's something we really want to push to let people understand that, hey, everyone want to go back to normal, but we got to work together to reach that goal somehow. Um, we had a question here from uh, Joe. Do we still have to social distance? If we're fully what, what's the do we still have the social distance? I guess maybe it means if we're if people are fully vaccinated, is social distancing still required? If you're fully vaccinated, it's just like the CDC guidelines. I mean, your family fully vaccinated, and everyone you get together for no, fully vaccinated, and uh, and you in the in the in the confined space yourself, yeah, you don't have social distance. I mean, it's you know, if everyone is fully vaccinated already, you're pretty much protected. Um, but you out to in the community um, and you don't know the person next to you, they vaccinated or not, and that's something different um, at, at this time, right? But when with 80%, uh, I would say use your judgment, but um, uh, at that time, I'm, I'm still going to wear my mask if I'm going out, go outside somewhere where I don't know anyone around me, right. you know, well, it doesn't matter if 80% or not, you, you get used to the mask at this point. Um, but in the family situation where I, I hang around my friend, and I know they're vaccinated already. You know, I'm not going to wear my mask I mean, because that's you no know, that's something that that uh, you that's you protect already. So um, yes, but if you go around people and you don't know, I I would still practice social distance, um, even if you if you fully vaccinated. Just um, uh, again, you know, um, um, we should be get used to that idea but um when we get 80 percent yeah well that's really really good um we can open people can come in and uh, it's okay you know um, you're not gonna get sick thank you doc anything in closing uh you want to add here yeah again um guys we need to get to that goal um go get vaccinated um you know if you have a question go talk to your provider um, and, and, and they tr will try to clarify um, any misconception you have. The vaccine is safe and very effective. Uh, that's number one. And number two, if you are sick, you know, again, uh, go back to square one. If you're sick, skip the party, skip a function, protect the people around you and respect people around you. So we can uh, and go get tested. So that way we can keep our cars going nice and low. Okay. Right. Uh, we have a comment here just before you go, Doc. Uh, Chris, I'm not sure if you gave a straight answer. If I have family coming in from Texas end of next month and they are vaccinated, do they plan to be quarantined for six days? Uh, you know, if by the end of next month, we, sh we already reach a 50% goal. Uh, and if they can um, produce um, their card that are fully vaccinated along the letter from the healthcare provider, they're fully vaccinated. Uh, the more likely, I would say that if the governor bless the um, the recommendation that they will not be quarantined at the hotel, they can be uh, they can go home from the airport. Doc, and the next last question. So, if you're fully vaccinated, we reach the path to half, perfect world, end of next month. I show my vaccine card. Am I just going home and I could just do whatever I want, or am I going home to home quarantine for whatever amount of days? You should go home and, and do whatever you want. Okay. There you go, guys. Thanks, Doc. Okay. You're welcome, guys. Have appreciate a good it. day. Yeah. Have, have, have a good weekend, Doc. Day. Got it. Okay. okay. Bye. I appreciate it. Right on. Dr. Ho, when?